Hello there, sword friends. Uh, today I have an unboxing of sorts to do, and maybe some initial impressions of this Ryujin katana that just arrived at my door. Now, uh, I'm gonna just talk about some initial impressions, take it out of the box, give it a quick look, and I'll do a more formal review later. Well, at least as formal as I get. Uh, and, uh, the, I, well, I just got in the mail today, and I wanna see what's in the box, and, uh, and yeah, I figured why not film it. Anyway, uh, it arrived thusly uh, from UPS, so it looks like you know, rut row. But uh, fortunately inside they have another box in there, so I'm guessing it's probably okay. I don't know. Anyway, initial, like if I just look at the box here, I've ripped my address off. It's got a pretty sticker here. It's a pretty substantial box. And I guess it's good that they double bag it, so to speak, because um, otherwise, otherwise it may not have made it to me. Um, this unboxing is probably going to be a little easier than most, given Now the, uh, the other thing I suppose I should note about this is I'm giving my impressions uh, before I say anything about the sword other than the, the shipping, is that uh, Ryujin reached out to me and asked if I was interested in doing a review on one of their products. And so this is the one that was sent as a review sample. Now I'll elaborate on like why it is this one maybe later in a review, but as I take it out of the box, I'm going to just give you some of my thoughts, but know that this was sent to me for free for the purposes of review. So anyway, there's there's that for you. Just before I open stuff up, this is a pretty fancy box. Uh, let me elaborate. Here is another box of very similar manufacture. Uh, and what I can see is just here are the latching mechanisms and the latching mechanisms seem very, very similar. I don't know if these are showing up in my camera. They look like they're made from the same forge. Uh, this has a fancier handle on it, and the silk seems a little better. Also, it might not come through, but it feels like there's like a pad on the top of this box, and this one is just not padded, I guess. It feels like there's cardboard underneath it. Uh, behind it, you can see that this has got this paper that's broken, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the best. It doesn't need to necessarily be any different than it is, but... Uh, this one is a little fancier than average, and in general, I'll tell you, I personally don't like these things. Uh, reason being, if you're like m most folks, I think... And this is the part where Matt went on to bitch and moan for hours and hours. Well, it seemed like hours and hours, but it was actually just a couple minutes. Still, it's really boring when he talks about boxes. The point of the story was that boxes cost money. They cost the company money, which means they cost you money. And if the box doesn't add any value, if you aren't willing to pay more to have a fancy box, then that is money that could be invested in making the product itself better. Making the pointy pointy stabby part pointier or sharper or pretty you're looking, improving the quality of materials, or the presentation, or the execution, whatever, that could be money that's spent not on a box, but on something that isn't a box. All right, so this is a certificate of authenticity, and it gives some dimensions and specifications for the sword itself, and uh, I will probably in the later review examine how accurate this bit is. And the bag bag seems like just about any other bag that you would see except it has the uh, kind of stitching here that says the name of the company hey 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 so the reason I'm looking over this in in kind of just general appreciation is uh, I asked for uh, when they said, what do you want as a review sample, I kind of went and picked some stuff. And it's just stuff I hadn't seen before. Um, and I, I thought, well, hell, you know, if I get to pick, let's pick something different that maybe shows the range of uh, capabilities. So uh, I asked for something red. I don't usually have a red sword. So I, I opted for red and I picked fittings in a, a Suba and they were able to deliver. And I also picked the Saya, which was really difficult to see in the uh, in the actual photos as to what it looked like and so it's probably not coming out terribly great here either but it's basically just stained red stained wood and it looks like there's a spiral inlay of uh, I don't know if it's like mother-of-pearl type 
type substance. But the transitions, it feels flat and it's it's different and interesting looking. Things feel in general tight. The Ito could be a little bit tighter. Okay, so straight out of the gate, I do notice that there are some little stains in the Ito. It also looks like there's a kind of a Samegawa panel that's looking to jump out here, but out of the gate, the handle feels good in my hands. Everything seems on there and pretty much ready to go. It's on there pretty good. And I don't know if this is good or bad, honestly. So uh, hopefully this is okay. So here, now you might ask why is this stuff here? So when the blades are shipped from across uh, the ocean, they are, there's a lot of change in temperature. And even if you oil the blade, there's possibility that it could arrive with rust. So by putting some cellophane on it or you know, this type of plasticky substance, it keeps the oil stationary on the blade and prevents it from rusting some. Uh, and it's obviously easy enough to take off. The downside is uh, sometimes little chunks of this stick in the saya. Uh, so it looks like it was all, all there, nothing broke off, but that's always the worry, is that some of it is lingering in the saya itself. Let's see if I can get this Subi to pop out here. Uh, actually, kind of cool, it has little bitty holes in here, which are different. Um, aesthetically, I, I kind of like, I like the look of this. Can't turn the sword the other direction or it will cut into my computer monitor. The blade, pointy pointy stabby part, let's see if it can focus on the old blade here. There we go. Look at that. So this light almost makes you think that the Hamon uh, pops out really, really easily, but in in person, it's actually a, very subtle. This light recipe that I'm using right now is very cooperative with this blade. It's making it show up uh, really, really well. Come on, camera, focus. The sword uh, in this light looks like it really pops out, but in actuality, it, it seems a little bit more subtle. Along with the Yakote and Kasaki here, it, it almost looks, you know, well burnished or something in, in the camera, at least the visual that I'm seeing. But in person, it's it's really quite subtle and it's tough to tough to make it out. It has a very mirror polish. The Shinogi is also very subtle. It looks like it's been on a buffing wheel or maybe something like that at some point because uh, the lines are just, it, it's very subtle in general. It doesn't have very crisp, uh, crisp lines on it, but it looks nice. The shape seems nice. The taper seems nice. How it feels in my hand also seems quite nice. The thing that I really, I guess, don't like or the, the main concern that I suppose I would have, everything being tight, the presentation being good, is that it came with a stain on the Ito. The diamonds look a little goofy and it's not, in some spots, the Ito isn't, isn't tight. Now, this isn't so loose that it would give me pause in terms of using. But uh, but some of these you know these little bits here can move around more more than I'm say is is good. It's still pretty average on par for for Chinese made katana reproduction type things. Uh, but but I I guess I, I'm not terribly enthused about the Ito wrap. There's also little bits like this. So the Samegawa uh, is is not is a little chewed up here. And then if it's maybe it won't come out, but. You can see that the panel is kind of folded up under here, and it looks just a little goofy. Uh, it's not not the biggest deal, not end of the world stuff, but the shape they got right, so or at least righter than most do. So I like that it's wasted. It has a pleasant appearance, and it's not. It fits well in my hands. It's big and and, and is comfortable for me to grip, but. It's also not axe handily and cumbersome and clunky to, to move around. So I do I do actually like the shape of the grip of the ska, the handle, but I don't necessarily like the material. The Ito doesn't feel slippery or anything like that, but it does it does move around more than I would say I would like. And the stain and the goofy same panels give me I don't know that if you have OCD that would that would perturb me. Anyway, sword friends, those are my thoughts on the initial impressions type side of this video. Uh, I guess proof will be in the pudding when I actually get to send it and swing it around. I'm unboxing it. I haven't used it. I've been sitting in the chair the whole time while I've been holding it, so I don't really know. 
uh, much about how well it holds up or how well it feels in the swing or usage or anything like that, and I'll talk about that stuff later in the review. If you have suggestions about what you would like to see in a review, uh, targets or things you would like me to test to see if this blade is worth your hard-earned money, then please let me know in the commentary down below. It would be helpful to frame that up before I go in the backyard and whack ice blocks with it or something stupid. Anyway, that's all I have. I, yeah, as always, cheers and thanks for watching.